Happy Sunday. Today is actually Father's Day. A day to reflect on how we direct our children, inspire them, you know, keep them in line, and all that other great stuff and huge responsibility that comes with being a parent. I love being a parent. It's a lot of work, but I love being a parent. It's 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 just it. And there's no no words can explain how much I you know love being a parent. It's just it's it's an honor. Um, I've grown tremendously since becoming a parent. Mentally, you know, I mean, just <laughs> on so many levels. So I thank my son because you know it's it's a grand opportunity to raise someone into an adult and see them grow and become this, you know, their own individual. And you have to nurture that, you know, let them be them, you know, don't try and make them something else. And that's what I like about my partner and I, we really, you know, do a good job, I feel, of uh, allowing our, our uh, boy to be himself and you know, and, and, and supporting all the things that he naturally wants to do. We ride his butt in school though, you know, but you know, but within that, within that realm of school and responsibility, we allow him to shine in his own way. And I, and I really, you know, I, I enjoy it. it it's, it, it's great. It's not always happy, easy, but it, it's a great thing. So did cardio this morning, that's going, you know, decent I had to take time off from it because I've been having these problems with my back as always you know um, so you know just for people that don't know I suffered a very horrible you know back injury in 2008 um, I was a trash collector and uh, yeah it's all you know it's 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 back injuries are ups and downs um, I've been able to conquer some goals and different things physically within that time frame, but um, you know, there are a lot of ups and downs and you know, Seattle doesn't have the best weather for someone that has like injuries or whatever because of low atmosphere pressure and you know, and the weather and different things like that. You tend to ache and different things like that during the um, months where it's cooler and rain and overcast, you know, skies. That's the reason why you have people that have like arthritis conditions that want to move to like Florida, San Diego, um, um, Arizona, where the atmosphere pressure is more like balanced and higher than it is in Washington. But I have affairs that I have to uh, tend to um, here over the next several years. And once those affairs are, uh, are um, spearheaded, then uh, my family and myself will uh, vacate this area and uh, look to um, dwell in a more convenient space for uh, the um, injury that I've uh, acquired throughout my lifetime and, uh, you know, activities and, and whatnot, career, job, you know, those type of things. So, uh, back to the uh, endomorph situation. In my opinion, I feel that you cannot overlook the behavioral um, context of your personality. You have to really look at behavior. And I've talked about this habitual things before, you know, changing habits. Matter of fact, I did a video the other day about changing your habits one habit at a time, which is, you know, awesome. That's, you know, that's the way to go about it. But these cues, you know, you know, why am I eating? The, you know these cues you know is it when is it when you're watching movies if it's when you're watching movies at night stop watching movies at night read a book you know if 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 that is something that is you know it, that is telling you in your subconscious mind that hey you know it's time to eat when i'm turning the movie on it's time to go grab this bowl or whatever or eat this or drink this sugary drink then it's time to not you know, partake in that behavior anymore. It's time to find something else to, you know, um, to, uh, you know, do during that particular time frame. I don't know what it is that you may, what you mean, heck, you get up and go take a walk. 
You know, there's nothing wrong with getting up in the, you know, in the middle of the night and going and taking a walk. I hope you live in a safe neighborhood, but if you don't live in a safe neighborhood, get a weapon. I mean, I don't know. You know, you can carry, you know, firearms in this country. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that you should, but I'm just saying that if you needed a weapon to, you know, to have the life that you need and feel protected, then maybe you need like a knife. I mean, I, or I mean, a uh, pepper spray. I mean, you know, I used to carry pepper spray when I was a kid with a paper route. I mean, so I don't think you're, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, I don't think that it should be attacking anyone's morals or anything like that to carry around a bottle of pepper spray. I mean, heck, you can get attacked by a dog. So you should have pepper spray if you're walking around in public places. I had a paper route. I got, you know, dogs came after me, you know, plenty of times, you know, and, you know, I was glad I had the pepper spray. I never had to spray a dog. But I was glad I had that pepper spray because I felt a little bit more at ease, you know, when it came to going out and doing, you know, my paper out or walking or just being out. Well, I mean, it's, it's the same thing with the individuals that want to, you know, be active. If you want to go out in the middle of the night, you know, you're going to have to protect yourself. You know, there, uh, one of my relatives got attacked 5 a.m. in the morning, murdered. You know, I was very, I don't even think I was born yet, but she was in a public place. And she got attacked and got, you know, and you know, she was, she was, her, her life was taken, unfortunately. And that was in broad daylight. So, you know, you gotta protect yourself if you wanna go out and do things like that. But enough with that rant. The behavior that you are partaking in has got to be, you know, altered in some kind of way. I can't tell you what that is, but all I can tell you is this, endomorphs, and I've said this before as well, endomorphs tend to have these reasons that they eat. Usually they're emotional. Maybe it's the people in your life. Maybe it's stress that you're carrying from, you know, the way you live, you know, the, your job. Maybe your job is, you know, causing you underlying stressors, you know, and stress that are, you know, making you feel like you need to, you know, eat for emotional reasons. I mean, this, these are very real things. Maybe you're dealing with life, you know, drama, family drama, things that you can't control. Maybe it's time for you to separate yourself from those type of things. I don't know. All I know is this, that if the behavior and your mindset doesn't change, it's going to be awfully hard for you to have, um, for you to, um, um, adjust your caloric intake down, especially if you've been in um, a rhythm of eating a certain amount of calories um, for a long period of time. And also, you know, the whole idea of late night eating. You know, if you're a late night eater, you are going to have to make some huge alterations to your um, evenings. You know, maybe you need to stop drinking coffee because then, you know, if you don't drink coffee during the day, then the evening time comes and you're tired. And so since you're tired, you can't stay up later. If you can't stay up later, then it's a lot easier to get to bed within the hours that you are still, you know, tired or, or uh, within the hours that you're still full from your last meal, see? A lot of people don't think about that. If you're trying to intermittent fast, and this is one of, I, I picked up one of these goodies from a guy that, you know, that was uh, mentoring me um, in the early stages of, uh, of uh, intermittent fasting and no dinner diet. If you're having problems sticking to the, um, sticking to, to the eating um, regimen in the evening times, reduce your coffee intake, up your activity. If you reduce your coffee intake and you up your activity, chances are you won't be hungry or you, or you will you will fall asleep because you will be so fatigued from the day that you won't be up long enough after your final meal to be, you know, to, to, to feel that hunger again. And a lot of what it is is people just, you know, they feel a little bit of hunger and they run to food. A lot of the time, you're really not hungry. A lot of the time, it's that you're just thirsty. And you know what? I'm not saying that it's always the best thing to freaking, you know, start guzzling water right before you go to bed because, you know, we all know that's just going to have you up in the middle of the night, you know, having to go to the restroom. And that's irritating. You know, then you're losing sleep, you know. But 
if that's what it takes for you to not be hungry anymore, then you know that that, that uh, you know in the evening time, if you're trying to do the no dinner diet, intermittent fasting, then that's just what it takes. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into too much more. I feel like that was a goodie in itself, and you know you could take that and run with it. You could take that and you know go out here like I always say and read. You know about the no dinner diet read about intermittent fasting and research go to blogs look up what other people are doing as i always say you should and extract knowledge from other individuals that have had success and apply that to your daily life you know trial and error failure that's how we learn and most likely you will be able to you know inevitably um acquire a natural way of doing things that is more you know convenient for your personality and your lifestyle but if you don't make those steps towards achieving you know a greater understanding of how to deal with your food intake you're just going to keep spinning your wheels and that's why i make these videos especially for endomorphs because i feel like endomorphs you know Unfortunately, you know, and I know people that don't have this problem. I know people that can eat 4,000 calories a day. They can eat all the way up to right before they're gonna go to bed. And they, they wake up the same weight every day, six pack, shredded, you know, feeling great. Let's go eat another 5,000 today. Let's try it, let's try. We ate four yesterday, let's do five. I know people like that. And they can eat the carbs, all that stuff. Endomorph can't do that. Got insulin resistance, you know, issues. Your food intake is limited. But just look at it this way. If there's ever famine, the endomorphs will outlive everybody. Happy Sunday.